Hello and welcome. My name is Dutch and welcome to my shooting guide for Gears 5 multiplayer. In this guide I'll be showing you some basic techniques that I believe every Gears player should know if they're going to delve into multiplayer, whether that's co-op or versus. For this guide we're focusing on the starting weapons of the game, the Lancer Rifle, Snub Pistol and Nasher Shotgun. But all of the techniques shown can be used with every weapon in the game. Now let's get started. This is Alfie. Alfie will be your designated target for today. Alfie represents what your enemy represents. When they're alive, they're able to do what you do. When they're dead, they're just a heap of blood, guts and bullets. Now do keep in mind that everything you see in this video is subject to change. This is the launch of the game and values of weapon damage and weapon range can change over time. So I suggest you pay more attention to the technique than to the actual weapon. Let's kick things off with the Lancer Rifle. The Lancer is the staple weapon for any support player or support play. When fired fully automatic, it can down a player within a second, depending on where you hit the target. At the making of this video, it takes 11 shots to the legs or upper body to take down the opponent, and 8 to the head. Now due to the recoil system introduced into Gears 5, I suggest you aim for the upper body or legs until you manage to get better at managing your recoil and then you can start going for the headshots. But it's not required. It only takes 3 bullets less to down somebody by hitting all headshots. Now in my opinion, depending on the range, it's better to go for center mass and ensure a hit than risk missing going for the head. Now 3 things to keep in mind before we move on to the next weapon is that number 1. Depending on latency in your game, these values might change. It could show that you're hitting, but actually not hitting because the game refused to hit. This is due to the netcode of the game, but it's something I won't be covering in this video because it's not something that's in your control. The second tip is there currently is no damage drop off with the Lancer. This means that it takes just as many rounds in a close range as far range to down somebody, depending where you hit, of course. And tip number three, when using the perfect active reload, you down players even faster. This also means that depending how many shots you hit, you can actually kill multiple enemies before you have to reload. Now next up is the Nasher shotgun. The Nasher is the most effective starting weapon in the game at killing players point blank. It's a shotgun, that's what it's supposed to do. However, there are multiple ways to use the Nasher in an effective way. First off is the point blank, which is the most obvious use of a shotgun. You shoot the enemy player when they're in point blank range, which is about 2 to 5 feet. Now once a player moves out of that range, you might think the shotgun is no longer effective, but it is. As you can see in the video, depending on how many pellets you hit, but let's assume you hit your entire shot, you can still down players in 3 to 4 shots at a pretty far distance. But you notice that if you start the fight at a long distance, you cannot take a player down. Your shotgun will be basically ineffective. Or is it? The Nasher might not be strong enough to start a fight, but it is strong enough to finish a fight between the 5 to 7 meter mark. As you can see in the demonstration, if a player is hurt enough, you can finish them off by landing the few crucial hits now in this video it's demonstrated with the Nasher, but you can use the Snub Pistol or of course the Lancer Rifle. Keep this in mind in every single fight, including your teammates. Now the last weapon of your arsenal is the Snub Pistol. The Snub Pistol is the default pistol that you spawn in in the regular game types. This does not count for arcade. And its main purpose in my eyes is a transition weapon in case that your Lancer or Nasher fails to down the target. It's faster to switch to your snub pistol than to reload your primary weapons. Keep this in mind when you're fighting an enemy yourself or providing cover for your teammates. Sometimes it's better to switch to your snub because it's more accurate than the lancer and shotgun on range. Now let's quickly cover the three types of shooting that all players tend to use. Number one is hip fire, which is without aiming and just pulling the right trigger or pressing your shoot button. Number two is the so-called hard aim. It's when you're using the left trigger or your aim button to fully align a shot and pulling the trigger. This is mostly used with rifles and such to remain as consistent and accurate as possible. And lastly is the pop shot. The pop shot is as it sounds. You're both pulling the left trigger and the right trigger or your aim and shoot button at the same time. And the pop shot is mostly used when you're walking around strafing a player, but you don't want to slow down with your hard aim. 
Now these three skills can all be used in conjunction with all the rest of the moves that we cover in this guide. Now that we have those basics out of the way, let's move on to the meat and potatoes of the video. The battles. In most scenarios in Gears, you're going to be taking your fights near or in cover. So it's important to know when you're in a good position and when you're in a bad position, and how can you switch those around. Now there are three things that you always need to keep in mind when you're in a cover fight. Number one is the type of cover. Number two is the risk. And number three is the exposure. Now Gears has different types of cover. Fat cover, thin cover, medium cover. And all of these have their own positives and negatives. For example, a fat cover gives you more cover, but also doesn't allow that much movement for attacking. And on the other side of the coin, fin cover gives you a lot more room to breathe and to attack, but also exposes you more to enemy fire. The second was risk. By risk, I mean how much do you have to risk in order to get a shot on target? And the last one is exposure. By exposure, we mean angles. And this is probably the most effective thing you need to learn. The goal is to minimize your own exposure and maximize the exposure of the enemy so that you can hit more shots than they can on you. And a combination of these three is always ideal. Now, as an example, you're in a cover fight with an enemy player that's in the identical cover as you trying to do the same thing. However, the most obvious thing to do right now is to get out of cover and simply walk up to the enemy and shoot him in the face. But this leaves you exposed and is not a good approach in my opinion. So what can you do here? Well, on first thought, it doesn't seem like much. But when you move around cover, you can see that the angle towards the enemy changes depending on which side you're looking and also which cover you're in. Now, when I head to the left of cover, you can see that the more I move to the left, the more exposed the enemy player is. Now this gives me an angle to attack. And a quick tip for this is to always angle your character correctly before you start aiming. By this I mean you can aim with the right hand and you can aim with the left hand in cover. On the flip side, I can SWAT turn to another piece of cover and instead of exposing myself by taking the first shot that I can, I think about my own exposure, turn my character away from the target, aim over the wall and down him in two to three shots. Now the greatest thing about these three fundamentals is that you can apply them every time you play. Whether you're playing Escape, or you're playing Horde, or Core versus AI, the mechanics stay the same. It's all about the type of cover, the risk, and the exposure in order to get the job done. And the last thing we're going to cover is shooting mechanics. Gears of War has had two different shooting mechanics since Gears of War 2, and Gears 5 is no different. The main shooting mechanic is when you're out of cover where every single ballistic weapon such as a lancer, snub or shotgun will get their bullets blocked by an object moving in the way of fire. So if I'm aiming at a person and someone walks across my shot, the bullets will hit the person in front of the person that I'm aiming at. However, there is an exception and the exception happens when you are in cover because the game will no longer register an object that is in the way between you and your crosshair. Sounds confusing? I know. Let me show you with these examples. So here I'm above my target that's on the other side of a wall. But as you can see, when I try to shoot the person without taking cover, all it does is hit the wall. And that's because there's an object between me and the crosshair. So if you draw a line between the tip of the gun and where the crosshair is at right now, there's a wall in the way, thus my bullets won't go through the wall. But if I take cover and I aim at the same spot again, my bullets will go through the wall. And you could see this as an exploit, but it's been in the game for 10 plus years. If it hasn't been fixed so far, you can be safe to say it's not going to get fixed. These mechanics are also used by the professional players at the highest level of the game. And there you have it, boys and girls. That was my guide on the shooting mechanics in Gears 5. I hope it's been helpful to you. If it was, please leave a like and consider leaving a comment what was most helpful to you. And make sure you share it with your friends that might be new to Gears or maybe returning to Gears. I also want to give a big shout out to the two Spartans that helped me make this video. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the battlefield.